Hi guys and welcome to Airability, your regular dose of lead therapy. This time I'm going to be taking a look at how I go about shooting 25 meter bench rest air rifle out there in the wind. But before that presentation I've got some news for you. Can you remember I won the bench rest UK event in Derby in May as well as winning the H3 class I won the overall aggregates for the weekend and I was over the moon. Well I'm pleased to report that was not a fluke. Um, I've recently attended the Benchrest UK event in Gloucester and I won the LV event and I also won the aggregates for the whole weekend. So and I came second in the H3 event. So out of two events I now have two gold medals, one silver medal and two weekend aggregate wins so i'm over the moon with that and i must admit it's great to feel you know happy when the effort's paying off i have put a lot of work into this and i'm loving it so on to the lesson in hand i've recently prepared a presentation about how i shoot in the wind and i hope although it's a personal method of how i shoot in the wind i hope how i go about doing things will be of some use to you guys out there who are probably thinking about shooting outside for the first time. Anyway, here we go, enjoy. I'm going to be talking to you about 25 meter air rifle bench rest shooting, about how I'll go about reading and interpreting my wind flags and then calculating how far I need to shoot away from the bull so the pellet bends its way into the bull for that perfect 10, hopefully. I like to think of it as the art of getting digital results out of an analog frenzy. But before we start, I have some golden rules about shooting in the wind and in competitions. So first of all, I don't moan about how bad the wind is. I don't moan about the time that I shoot. I don't moan about the lane I'm in. I don't waste my energy on these things because they're out of my control. I always remember that everyone has their own challenges to deal with and shooting in all the other lanes is not perfect either. They've got to cope with their changing conditions. I understand to win, I need to adapt better and quicker than my opponents. I can't control all the circumstances but I can control how I react to these circumstances. I just get on with the job the way I practiced. So, we're about ready to set up our wind flags. And a good place to start is putting, you people usually shoot with three wind flags. And a good place to start is placing them seven, 14 and 21 meters away from your shooting table towards the target. You can change this at a later date as your experience grows, but this is a good place, roughly equidistant between you and the target, to get good results straight away. But like I said, as your experience grows, you may want to move them. I personally have a light wind indicator, which is an ostrich feather on a, on a wire. It might look a bit strange, but it works well for me. And I put that about halfway between the shooting bench and the target. I also place the flags in a pattern I can see them that I can see them clearly and that they're not outside of my lane and here's an example of that. So once we've got our equipment set up we then need to start thinking about how the wind is going to affect the point of impact of the pellet. Now we'll have all seen this diagram which shows how the wind will influence the pellet when you're shooting. So for instance, the top circle, the wind is blown directly towards us and it actually slows the pellet down a little bit. So it may drop a little bit on the way to the target and drop below the crosshair and you've got to adjust and shoot slightly higher. The opposite is true with the wind coming from behind you towards the target. That will carry the pellet to the target faster and it won't drop as fast and you may have to aim a little lower to get that pellet on target. Now things start to get complicated. If a wind's coming from the left to the right, 
you think it would blow the pellet across to the right in a straight line. Well that's not the case. What happens is the pellet is spinning and as the wind interacts with the, with the pellet whilst it's spinning it also draws it down slightly from the centre line so you may have to compensate for that. And the reverse is true if the wind is coming from the right the pellet can actually pick up a little bit with the way the spin of the pellet interacts with the wind as well as moving to the left. All the other circles are interpretations of all the angles that the wind could be approaching you. The only issue with this chart is it gives you an idea of how the pellet is influenced by the wind but it doesn't quantify how much the pellet is influenced by the wind and I'm going to try and put a value on that in the next couple of slides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a clock face system. So if we look at the picture of the wind flags above, the tails of those wind flags are at approximately 7 o'clock. And I will use this method through the next couple of slides to explain how far you hold off. So if the wind was a little stronger in the same direction, it may be more representative to an 8 o'clock wind flag and vice versa if it was coming from the other side you would have a, a you know a gentle wind would be about five o'clock and a slightly stronger wind would be four o'clock so when i start talking about where the wind's coming from i'm going to use a clock face such as this the red line shows when there is no detectable wind on the wind flags and we will also talk about how to shoot when that happens so hopefully things are going to be clear for you guys Here's a few ex more examples of how the wind flags react. Here is an example of a four o'clock wind. And here is an example of a seven o'clock wind. And finally, here's a picture of how my light indica wind indicator works when there is no perceivable wind on the wind flags the feather still moves somewhat and gives me a hint where to make micro adjustments um, when shooting. So after you have devised a way of mapping for each particular gun that I have, the hold offs that I need to achieve to maximize my chances of hitting the bull. So it's whether the wind's coming from the right or the left, this is how I'll go about it. So here is a representation of the target that we're shooting at with the 10 ring the bull in the middle. I've only put a half a target up because we will be putting the wind flag lines above this in a moment and it all gets a bit cluttered but you can see fr from where the rings are how far you're going to need to shoot out from the bull. Just imagine an overlay, an imaginary target, the other half of the target on, on the screen yourself. So for instance if a wind flag is roughly five o'clock and all three of my wind flags are lining up to roughly five o'clock with this particular rifle that I've mapped, I would be shooting here. So shooting at the eight and a half ring and remember because of the pellet spinning slightly above the center line will give me the most chance for that pellet to bend in and be pushed in by the wind and hit the ten ring. And on the other way, if we are shooting in a 7 o'clock wind here, remember the wind is coming from the other side and it can actually make your pellet rise. But with this particular rifle, as well as moving it across, it doesn't actually affect the vertical aspect of the shot. And because of the spin of the pellet, the hold off isn't equal to that of the other side in the same wind. It's slightly left. So for a seven o'clock wind, I am just past the eight ring on the center line of the target. And that will give me the most chance of bending the pellet into the 10 ring. Now, is, I've, marked this, the, I've marked the four o'clock wind flag here in amber because the f stronger the winds you get, the less desirable it is to shoot. So I could, if, you know, if on the day there were no lulls in the wind, um, 
I may have to shoot where this um, wind flag is represented in amber and shoot further away from the bull and higher up to bend it into the bull. I will say the stronger the wind, the more luck that getting the bull is involved. Um, so here we go, and this is where I would shoot at an eight o'clock wind um, represented on the wind flags. My personal preference is my kind of Goldilocks zone for shooting is anywhere between those green wind flags. So between five and seven o'clock on the wind flags is the optimal place I choose to shoot. Now what happens when there's absolutely no wind registering on your wind flags? Well this is one of the most dangerous times to shoot. You must be aware that there are still micro winds, there are pressure differences. There's still something moving out there and it can, the, the air can be moving enough to still send you out the 10 ring. And this is what, why, I've, why I've actually um, marked these wind flag tails in red is because for me it's one of the most dangerous times to shoot. You can get caught out very easily if you're not concentrating extremely hard. And that's why I've put here an imp a more mushy oval where to aim um, zone here. It's down to experience with your rifle. What I do is I look at my light feather, the wind indicator, I make sure none of the other flags are moving and then I solely focus on, on the feather and whichever way that's moving towards, I shoot the opposite side of the 10 ring and I find that maximises my chances of getting an X because quite frankly when the wind flags are straight up and down if you concentrate and using a light wind indicator you should be getting tens because it's as close as you're ever going to get to shooting indoors so here's a picture of my light wind indicator in action and it's still moving quite a lot but i can assure you although that's moving the wind flags if that was on the um, field the main wind flags would not be moving just to further show the impact of the spin of the pellet on the um, vertical axes of your aim point you can see here I've drawn a dotted line to show the further you aim out the slightly higher you've got to aim because the wind is stronger and affecting the pellet more and as I said with my particular rifle when I'm when I'm bending them in from the right hand side it doesn't seem to make much difference with the the vertical axis of where I need to aim so that the pellet bends into the 10 ring. Some guns you would need to aim slightly lower but that is the gun that I've mapped out here. Now you can't just do this with map a gun using this method over one or two shots. It's actually over hundreds of shots and you're continually changing the points of impact until you are happy that that's how your gun reacts in those conditions. And then with practice, you can calculate the impact points and how far you have to hold off on the fly. For instance, if it's half past six or, 20 or, or half past five or, you know, half past seven, all those increments in between those aim points, you can calculate with practice. This is just a great example and a starter of how it actually works. But here we have assumed the rarity of a perfect left to right or zero wind. We've got to remember as your skills advance, you've got to change the vertical axes of these aiming points. So if some of the wind is, if the wind's coming direct, diagonally towards you, you look at the angle of the wind flag for how far you aim out, but you may have to adjust the vertical, vertical positioning of your aim point slightly higher to take into account the pellet being slowed up by the wind coming towards you and the same can be said about wind going away from you diagonally it will carry the pellet somewhat and you may have to aim a little lower only experience and practice will teach you this but this graph gives you an understanding of what to expect will happen when you're shooting in the wind so one of the other things that you need to do finally just to round this off 
when you're shooting in the wind when you're setting up watch for wind patterns before you start shooting watch for does it do four o'clock or seven o'clock winds more often than it does eight o'clock or no winds and what you do is you pick two or three regular occurring wind patterns and you wait for those before you shoot and you try to shoot only in those reoccurring wind patterns so you may go a minute or two without shooting a shot but then you may shoot two or three shots in a minute when the wind is consistent on your chosen wind pattern remember you've got the red practice targets on the side you can shoot as many practice shots in these red targets as you want within your 20 minutes as long as you shoot your 25 competition targets these are so valuable if used properly so what I do is let's take this top left target I at this point I knew what the wind was doing I looked at the wind flags I knew from you know the chart and mapping how far I need to hit and um, aim off the ball to hit the ball and as you can see I was quite successful even on my practice target here on the top left one so I always map each of the wind conditions on the day and shoot each wind condition in the practice targets of my chosen wind patterns and that's how I learn exactly where to shoot on the day but that doesn't mean you're going to be perfect on the top row as you can see um, the middle target is a bit skew with and um, I made a bit of a mistake there and that wasn't because the system wasn't working it was because I either I delayed my shot too long and the wind pattern changed as, as I was shooting so you need to make sure that when you shoot you've got one eye down the scope one eye on the flags and you shoot when the flags are settled in the chosen wind pattern that you want to shoot so there you go there is a brief overview of how to shoot in the wind but I just want to emphasize before I sign off that it is just practice 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 and practice uh, it's the most infuriating frustrating thing you can ever do shooting in the wind and I think that's why I absolutely love it well guys I hope I didn't bore you stupid with my very long powerpoint -y presentation I must admit I didn't realize I knew so much but anyway anybody has any questions about shooting in the wind get yourself onto the benchrest uk facebook group or get onto the airability facebook group and you know there's loads of people there willing to offer their help and experience to new shooters so guys until next time remember keep living that air gun dream take care bye bye <laughs>